there's no doubt it's Paddy Hillary territory. Jerry Hillary, the president's first cousin. President Hillary's brother-in-law, Bill Ryan. And then another first cousin and local singer, Father oh, Michael Hillary. Lovely Milton Malbay, bright jewel beside the ocean. How often in my dreaming in far America I see your lofty steeple, your noble streets and borings, but most of all your people, the best in County Clare. Small holdings and small bogs. Here, people are perhaps the most valuable natural resource. Joe Ryan makes implements for the small farmer, anything made of metal or aluminium. He's a sort of professional inventor working to local needs. Anyone is interested where your bread and butter is, and my bread and butter's here, and of course I'm interested in the people, and why wouldn't I be in the area, you know? You seem to be making things for small farmers. For it? small farmers, yes, because it's mostly, you know, I operate in this area and I get all my business in this area and obviously it's, you know, that I would turn towards the climate we live in, a machine for the type of people in which I operate, the environment in which I operate. These young men have jobs in their hometown, but many Irishmen don't, and our schools may be to blame for that. Certainly Father Harry Bowen thinks so. He's with the local enterprise unit in Shannon Development Company. I'd say the educational system, with its heavy emphasis on academic education, is a serious disincentive to enterprise and economic development. And I would say that there will have to be a very close link between the Department of Industry and Commerce and the Department of Education on, on this one, in ensuring that people who come out of schools come out with initiative, with, with drive and, and with a certain amount of know-how. It's a Joe Ryan invention, a mobile milking machine. Just hitch it to the back of your tractor. A case of the milking parlour going to the cows. No electricity is needed, just the hydraulic power of the tractor. Joe invented it after that long ESB strike blackout of about four years ago. He sells them now at around £470, complete with milking buckets. Or if your outhouse is without power, just install the unit inside and park your tractor outside. Inventions like these need safeguarding by an ironclad patent, with professional help, of course. If you have a medical trouble, you get a doctor, and, and if you have a law trouble, you get a solicitor. Well, if you've uh, invented a problem, in other words, you've invented something, you've obviously got to get a patent agent, you know, who's versed in that sort of thing, and they're writing the proper clause has got to be written into the patent. And is that very expensive? That's a very expensive business, definitely, yes. What sort of money? Oh, we're talking about for a pound, five, six hundred pounds. In Belfast, a bomb wrecked a footwear shop on the... Joe's business is a family affair. His wife, Mary, handles the bookkeeping with some clerical assistance from niece, Claire. Four years ago, Joe was making metal candle holders at 30p a go. Now he employs 14 and has an annual turnover of £100,000. But it isn't simply a natural growth. Along with business advice from the Shannon Development Company, the IDA have given him nearly £6,000 in grants. And certainly in Joe Ryan's case, this support for a local initiative has paid off. Joe's latest invention is on the drawing board and ready to go. The small man's turf cutting machine. And Milltown Malbay's turf burning ESB plant is right behind him. They can handle 30,000 tonnes a year, 
but they get only 5,000 tons. Bill Ryan, supervisor at the generating station. Well, uh, we could do it a lot more turf than what we're getting presently, and even over the last couple of years, we can use all the turf available. Uh, we're not in competition with private turf in the private market, but we certainly could use a lot more turf here at the station. The idea here of this machine is that it, it, it'll increase his, his output by 10 times. We're going to lower the, the, the time involved in cutting. So if he cut one sod in about 10 seconds, we're going to bring down 10 sods in about six seconds. To, to operate this type of machine, uh, there's two items involved. Number one is the tractor, which is going to supply the motor power. And number two is the turf cutting machine itself, which you have here. The connection between the two is, as we see here, is a hydraulic pipeline, two pipelines in other words. One feeds the supply of hydraulic oil in, and the other takes it back to the reservoir again. The machine will keep cutting away until the operator again throws the switch and stops it. So the guy could be sitting off having a cup of tea? Exactly, and smoking cigarettes, you know, you can sit down and read your, whatever, you, whatever novel you're interested in, you can read it, and this is the thing, this is the answer. The machine itself we hope to sell for about eight to nine hundred pounds. Joe Ryan's machine, which is suitable for small bugs, this is ideal as far as we're concerned because you have a lot of small bugs in Clare and a lot of small suppliers. And uh, if this type of machine could uh, be got off the ground, uh, I would hope that uh, each of these machines, I estimate, would probably in a season produce about anything from 400 tonnes of turf up to six. And as well as that, he would cut for his neighbours and they would supply it. We'd probably get supplies we never had before. This would generate interest, like, you know, and would be all to the good of the power station here. There is a lot in, in prototype work, you know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of reward in it. I wouldn't say there's a, there's a, there's a monetary, there's a, there's a lot of money in it, but there's a lot of satisfaction in doing something and see the thing work, you know, there's a lot of pride in it, you know. But you're making some money out of it. We make, we make a living out of it, let's put it that way. <laughs>